Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Beloved grace and peace to you from the one who sows seeds of love and peace, and justice, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Listen, listen, a sower went out to sow. And so begins one of the most well-known parables from Jesus. Parables are stories that are mostly metaphors that teach us something else between the lines. The story that we hear at story time is often also a metaphor. It teaches us something else about a truth. And Jesus used them because, believe it or not, people do not like to just sit and listen to people preach all the live long day. People learn differently. Some learn by reading, and some learn by listening, and some learn by repetition, and some learn by debate. And Jesus was banking on those people who could learn through hearing stories that were rich in images and establishing meaning within them. So the parable of the sower that we heard this morning was one of the very first parables that Jesus offers in Matthew's Gospel. It's interesting to me that Jesus, the carpenter's son, chose a farming metaphor for his parable. He would not necessarily have grown up with a deep understanding of farming and gardening, but the culture that he was in was an agrarian culture, so he knew his audience, and he knew that many of them would understand exactly what he was talking about. Listen. A sower went out to sow. Fortunately, this is a pretty easy metaphor to deconstruct and understand. The seed being sown is the word of God, the truth of God's unending love for us, the wideness of the mercy and grace that God shows to all of us. The sower, at least in this case, is Jesus, who is both fully human, so human that when a crowd pressed in on him on the beach, he gets in a boat, rows out a little bit, and teaches from there. And also, the sower is the God incarnate, Jesus, the Word made flesh. The story becomes more complex, but not complicated, when Jesus begins to describe all the different types of soil, the different places where the seed that was the word of God would land. He said some of it will fall on a path. And when Bruce and I walk at Semmel Park, you know, the paths there are hard. And we're thankful for that um, because then we know right where we're going. But if seed lands there, it doesn't take root. Another seed falls on rocky ground, and while it might sprout, those rocks are going to keep it from having a deep root system. So when the sun comes up, they wither and die. And other seeds who are sown among thorns are going to be choked out. And finally, Jesus said, 
Seeds fall on good soil and bring forth abundant fruit. Then Jesus decides that maybe he needs to explain the metaphor a little bit more. Remember, it was his first parable, so maybe he hadn't learned that metaphor and parable are usually left to the, to the hearer to draw their conclusions, but he lays it out nonetheless. He says, when we hear the word of the kingdom and we don't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, just like a seed that was on the path. And when we hear the word of God and immediately rejoice, but then we fall away and we have doubts and troubles and we, we don't believe what we've heard, then that's like seed without roots. And when we are lured away by what the world has to offer and we turn to it instead of God, that's like seed that's choked out by thorns. And finally, when we hear the word of God and we understand it, we are like deep soil that bears abundant fruit. Are any of you familiar with the Enneagram or the Myers-Briggs personality tests? Yes. I always feel like this was some ancient Myers-Briggs thing. Are we rocky soil? Are we a path? What are we on this day? I mean, I think I always go there first when I hear this parable. What kind of soil am I? What kind of soil is my neighbor? What kind of soil? But here's what I know to be true. At some time or another, we are all, each one of us, each of these different types of soil. Each of these different types of believers that Jesus describes. And it would be lovely if it went in a sort of symmetrical manner that we started as one, that we started on the path and we ended up as the deep and rich soil. But you know, any day I can wake up and be, be a little bit thorny, be a little bit rocky. Depending on what's happening in my life or in the world, it is easy to not lean into the deep rootedness of the gospel. How often do we find ourselves struggling to understand the word of God? The word of God as we find it in scripture, the word of God as we know it in Jesus. Sometimes it's so hard to understand how we can live with such a good God and there can be terrible things that happen in the world and terrible things that happen to people that we love and terrible things that happen to us. It makes us ask how faith and discipleship fit into our lives. How would they fit into the narrative of the world? And in those seasons, when it's hard to understand that, it feels as though the evil one has come and snatched our faith right off of the path. And who among us, when troubles overwhelm us, don't question whether faith in God is even enough in those seasons? Do not wonder where God has retreated when we were in need, or even if God was there to begin with. Of course we wonder, and of course we question, and yet the sower is still there, planting the seeds on the path in the rocky soil, among the thorns. And then I wonder, who among us doesn't prefer the things that the world has to offer over the things that God offers instead? And you know, it's easy for us to say, oh no, I would never do that. I don't, I don't rely on, on the things that I have, the, the things I can create or collect. But I think that it's much trickier than that. Because I think we can believe that we can actually rely on our own understanding or our own resilience. Or we can find great identity and satisfaction in what we have accomplished, in what we have achieved. And then those things can become stumbling blocks 
to the faith of others, but also to our own discipleship, especially when we use them to stand in the way of the Spirit's movement. When we rely on ourselves and what we have or what we lose track of or what we have amassed or what we have accomplished or what we have achieved, God's work is choked out by that. And yet, the sower is still there, sowing those seeds patiently in spite of us. So how many of you know what I mean when I say a volunteer plant? You know, a volunteer plant? I, I think Queen Anne's Lace is a volunteer plant. Is that, is that right? And then that yellow stuff that grows in the early spring, I don't know what that is, but I think that's a volunteer plant too. So volunteer plants um, are flowers and plants that grow in places where they were carried as seeds by birds and animals and the wind. They take root wherever they find welcome. Hear that again. They take root wherever they find welcome. There's a wondrous article in the New York Times this month by the author Margaret Renkel, who uh, wrote Graceland at Last and a couple of other things. But she says that her favorite volunteers this year are the pumpkin vines planted last fall by the thumbless hands of the squirrels in her yard. If Jesus had known about volunteers, I wonder how this parable might have changed. Might he have reminded us that the word of God can be planted by the most unsuspecting of gardeners? Friends, the word of God does not have to come from those of us who have been handed the stole and called the gardener. The word of God comes on the wind and from the animals that God created and in the most unlikely ways. God, the sower, uses the most unsuspecting of people to help us plant seeds. But the key to unlocking this parable is not in figuring out volunteer plants or what type of soil we are. It's not in typecasting ourselves or our neighbors as too rocky or too thorny or rich and deep because that typecasting isn't ours to do and it's likely to change. This is the nature, though, of who we are, and Jesus understood this. But you notice that in the parable, Jesus never said, I will have nothing to do with the thorny soil. I will have nothing to do with the soil on the path. I will have nothing to do with the rocky soil. Jesus said, the sower sowed the seed. And this is the key to the parable. It is written between the lines. It is the good news of this day that the sower keeps sowing. God does not give up on us. Whether we are shallow or rocky or thorny, the sower just continues to plant the seed in us with generosity and wild abandon. The sower doesn't give up. The sower does not move on, never to return, because the sower loves the soil. The sower believes that we can grow into that big flower that was in the children's book this morning. The sower believes in us more than we believe in ourselves. Whatever is ahead for you all at Agnus Day Lutheran Church, the sower is among you sowing the seeds. And you all, as volunteers, are sowing the seeds. And God, the sower, has not abandoned you. God 
walks alongside you in this season. I just have this image of God with a big gardener's belt on, slinging seeds out and watching how they grow. Dear people of God, we have been planted in this place by a sower, by a gardener, by a God who is faithful and who does not give up on us who knows that our hearts and our spirits and our bodies grow weary, who knows that our doubts and our fears keep us awake in the watches of the night, and who knows that we too often do rely on our own understandings instead of first seeking the kingdom of God. This sower calls us to a daily dying and rising again, to new life. God keeps sowing the seeds in us. And those seeds are love and mercy and grace. And the sower never leaves us. Thanks be to God. And let the church say, Amen. sing the hymn of the day, I want you to notice that as I turned around from the, uh, from the sermon, this beautiful uh, pyramid that hangs here, and notice all of the things that are growing, and that they're even growing out of some rocky soil in there. I invite you to stand. We sing the hymn of the day as it's printed in your bulletin.